We're going to start out by changing the material on our ground plane. Uh, right now we have uh, just the green grass preset. And I'm going to load in tropical water right now under the liquids presets. And that way we have kind of a nice little ocean. Uh, now what I also want to do is since our OpenGL is showing this as green uh, for our ground plane, if we take a look underneath the material, we can select which color we'd like to show. I'm going to change that to blue. And that way our OpenGL looks a little bit closer to what we actually have uh, in the scene. And we're going to start out with uh, just adding in a standard terrain. Uh, so I can go ahead and just click the terrain button to add that in. And I want to change our material and go to rocks and just select the default, which is that gray color that we have. And it'll give us a good starting point, just sort of a blank surface to work with. And what I want to do is just kind of scale this up a bit. And we're going to zoom our camera out. And now if we double click onto our terrain, or we right mouse click and go to edit object, it'll pull up our terrain editor. And we're just going to make a few modifications to this. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is just click on iceberg, and that is going to flatten out a large part of our surface. And then I'm going to click mountain uh, to kind of round that out a little bit more. Now, the depending on what your resolution is, really can affect how dramatic that effect uh, on the side is going to be that we just used. So if I hit iceberg again, and then multiply our surface times 2, so that we have 512 by 512, and then hit mountain once again, we're going to notice that we still have more of that uh, left over uh, than we had before. And what I can also do is select eroded and now we have some nice lines being cut uh, into the sides here uh, just to give us a little bit of variation and something that looks fairly interesting and I'm going to click, keep clicking on eroded and just bring those sides in uh, but we can see that in some of the areas uh, we're starting to lose our edges so we want to hit zero edges which is going to pull that down and now we've lost a lot of our depth you can hit iceberg again, mountain, and then erode. And we can also use some of the erode effects in the erode panel, or go ahead and paint some of these effects on. We could use a diffusive to smooth out areas. Glaciation, which will uh, really affect the terrain in different ways. Uh, we can see right now it is creating sort of a boxed effect because of our softness and flow. So I'm going to reduce the flow and we can see these nice little areas being cut away and a good little erosion effect. Uh, there's a couple of different ones we can use to really affect the way this looks. We could also use some of the global settings to really pull in and add certain areas to this terrain. And right now the buttons may not be showing up uh, with the text correctly within the video because of the way uh, my current interface is set up. I'll be able to see uh, within the erode effects on your terrain editor uh, which ones I'm using. But now we just have a very interesting looking terrain. I'm going to hit times 2 once again to make 1024 by 1024 pixel terrain resolution and I'll go ahead and smooth that out a little bit more and click OK. And what I'm also going to do just before I get started is go back to the edit object and I just wanna clip the bottom of this terrain a little by just dragging from the slider on the left and that's gonna cut out uh, that square shape around our terrain and then I'm going to hit drop object and that'll just drop it directly onto our water surface. And we're not going to worry right now about having uh, this surface underneath the water 
uh, because that's going to require an entirely different type of design for the terrain. So we're mainly just focusing on the terrain itself, and the water is really just there. It's kind of a little added extra. Uh, but let's get started on creating the ice material uh, for this surface. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go to the Atmosphere Editor, and right now I'm using Global Radiosity. I'm going to check this to Global Illumination, which is going to render a little bit quicker. Uh, radiosity could take a little bit longer to render some of these effects, especially once we're starting to work with our subsurface scattering. And that's uh, really going to play a huge uh, role within our render times. And in the Atmosphere Editor, if we just take a look at some of the light settings I have, uh, I've got our light intensity up a little, the Sky Dome lighting gain is increased slightly, uh, which is why our surface, although is tan, is appearing white. Our ambient lighting is at around 23%, and the light balance more close to the ambient is going to uh, impact this texture and material as well. So we can take a look at that uh, once we start working on the surface, and then moving this slider back and forth to really get the lighting correct. Uh, for the sun, our pitch, right now we have it uh, almost midday. Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring this down and start to have our sun setting a little. We can click OK. And now I'm going to select our terrain, and double click on the surface to open up the advanced material editor. If you're in the basic material editor, you can just click on the button on the top to bring up the advanced material editor. I'm going to change our color under color and alpha because we want this to be, of course, not this tan color. We want it more of a bluish white color. So I'm going to bring our slider down in the center first just so that we can really see the contrast of our colors because once we're in the higher and lower ranges, it gets difficult to see the actual color. We want something that is in between the blue and the green so we have more of that cyan color. Uh, but we don't want it to be too close to blue or too close to green. So we want it around right in the center, and then we're going to drag up our slider a little bit higher, so it's just a very, very light blue. And we'll be able to adjust this uh, depending on the way it looks. Once we get some of our other settings going, we'll go ahead and click OK, and we can just see a little preview render. It's a very blue surface, but a nice light blue, and not too dark, and not too green. And now, before we really do anything else, we're going to go to the Effects tab, and we can see some of these settings that we have as the presets. Our diffusion amount is set to 60%, ambient at 40%, and luminous right now is at 0%. Really what we want is this material to kind of glow on itself, so we don't want to have a luminous value, at least not yet. Later, we're going to be adding snow, uh, over this terrain as another layer. And you're going to see how that really affects uh, the way this overall uh, translucent effect looks. So I'm going to change our contrast down to soft and then go to our translucency tab and we're going to turn on subsurface scattering. I'm going to click OK just so that we can see a quick preview of what this already looks like. And we can see uh, it's just a very even lighting throughout our surface. There's really not a lot of interesting uh, things going on with it. Uh, we are going to have to adjust uh, a few of the settings in order to get this to react and look correct. So I'll go back to translucency in the material editor. And if we take a look at the balance, there's two different types of subsurface scattering. There's multiple and absorption. If we go to multiple scattering, uh, we're going to end up with a much darker surface and we lose our absorption, which is basically what's creating our effect. If we take a look at the differences with subsurface scattering off, it's a little bit brighter. Turn it back on with just multiple absorption and it really ends up just darker, uh, which is an effect we can achieve with the ambient settings, uh, although we do have some lighter areas uh, for this sort of an effect in creating ice, we want to use absorption. 
So we are going to drag the slider all the way to 0%, and we don't want any in-between. We either want it on absorption or not on absorption, and that way we get a much quicker render as well. Now with our absorption, we also have a filter color, uh, which is basically the color that we're going to see on the inside. So now I have this closed out, and we can start to see our preview. I'm going to go ahead and drag this window open a little bit further uh, so we can see a much larger preview. I'm also going to right mouse click on the render options, set our quality to final, render this to the screen uh, so we're not rendering within the windows, and click OK and that way we can uh, take a look at some of these more full quality renders. And we can see a very nice light balance already uh, between our surface. And if we take a look just at this filter color, uh, first I'm just going to change this to something very obvious. And let's go ahead and change that to a red. Click OK. And now if we take a look at our surface, we're going to see it's extremely red. What's happening is, with the absorption, we have an absorption color. So as light hits it, uh, it starts to scatter around and basically a glow whichever color we have set to the absorption color. So right now it's all red. Uh, now it looks very grainy and that is mainly because of our quality of our render. Our quality boost is set to none. Uh, in order to get a very smooth surface we will have to increase that quality uh, to at least two or higher. Uh, but I'm going to take this absorption color and change this back to white. Uh, because this should work well enough uh, for what we're working on with this ice surface, although uh, if we need to change that to a light blue, we can do that as well. If we go over to the left where the translucency is, uh, we need to set a refraction index. Right now it's set to 1, which is a vacuum. Uh, no refraction whatsoever. Water is a refraction index of 1.33 and if you want to be a little more precise, it's 1.333. Uh, but since we're working with ice, it's actually lowered a little, and we have a value of 1.3. Uh, it's actually more like 1.299 or 301, uh, really depending on the age of the ice. Uh, but 1.3 is going to be a very close number and work quite well. So we can click OK. And now one thing we can tell is that we have a a little bit too blue of a surface, so we're going to need to modify that overall color. Go to color and alpha, edit that color map, edit our color, and drag it up a little higher towards white. Uh, because this will create it to a little more gray, and now we can see that effect, and it looks pretty good. We might need to bring that down a little more, or maybe even change that absorption color uh, to something a little more blue. Uh, but to start with, it's starting to look good. Go back to our translucency tab and what we can see is we have an average depth setting. Uh, this is going to give us the ability to set an option of how far we want light to penetrate into the object. Uh, it is not a definite value. Uh, right now it's set to one meter but that doesn't mean we won't get uh, some scattering beyond that point and with a lot of scattering inside the object uh, we might get a little more. So it's a very rough estimate, but it's still really, really close, and you will see uh, dramatic effects throughout the changes. Now before I can really set that value uh, to something that's going to work, I need to take a look at the size of our terrain. So I'm going to change this to the ruler tab, select our size option, and we can see that the width of this terrain on the X and the Y is 280 meters. So that gives us a little better idea of how far we want light to penetrate into this object. So we'll edit our material, and now that we know how large this object is, we can set a depth that's a little more realistic. Now you don't necessarily have to create an extremely large depth where we want it going all the way through. Uh, if I set this to a value of 150, and then we take a look at the preview, we can see it basically just turns white. Uh, a little bit too high of a value. Even though we have a very large terrain, uh, we don't need that high of a value. So I will change this up to 15, or down to 15. And now we see something that looks a little bit nicer. Uh, we have some areas that are 
really white on the edges where there's a lot of light coming through and the peak on the top is a little bit lighter uh, but we still have some nice shadowed areas uh, where it's a little bit denser but we may even need to bring that down a little bit further and you just want to play around with the value until you get something that looks uh, realistic and looks basically what you want uh, so we'll bring that down to a value of 10 so now we have 10 meters and it gives us a really nice glow uh, throughout the object starting to look a lot more like ice uh, if you notice along the bottom of the object where it's starting to intersect uh, with the water uh, we're noticing it's very very white and that is because it is very thin at this point if we go ahead and take this object and move it underneath our water and just take a look uh, we're going to notice some different effects and that is because we're viewing a subsurface scattered object in surface through a transparent object so sometimes you're going to end up uh, with something that doesn't quite look right and of course we can still see the outline and where those edges end and keep in mind too that the water is going to start blocking out that light so I'm just going to raise this back up a bit and we're going to have it going into the water just a little uh, which is going to create a very light green uh, effect around the outside and if we go back into the material editor I am going to give this a little more color so I'm going to edit our color and just bring this down a little bit further and less white that we have and now we can start to see some of that color back uh, but it might be a little too green so edit our material edit our color once again and I'm going to bring this a little more towards the blue make it a little lighter and click OK and some of this is just has to do with the tweaking uh, you might just have to tweak the surface a little to get it to look more like ice uh, but overall we're getting a really nice color blend uh, and really nice looking absorption now we still need to edit a few more uh, settings uh, one main thing is that there's no bump map and of course this is going to have uh, a bit of a bump on it uh, a lot of this also depends on what color the ice itself is going to be uh, whether or not you want it to be really smooth and more blue or you want it, the ice to mainly be made of packed ice uh, which is going to be more of a white and basically the surface we kind of have right now uh, what we also need to consider is our highlights uh, because of course snow and ice is shiny so we're going to increase our global intensity of the highlight and now if we have ice, ice is extremely shiny uh, it's not very dull so we want to increase that value as well and we could adjust the highlight color and make that blue if we wanted instead of white uh, we could play around with a couple of those settings uh, to get it to look different ways uh, but overall uh, this should work uh, we can see that highlight showing up now to give it more of an appearance of ice and that is a little bright and we might want to tone that down just a bit so I'm going to open up the material editor and just tone down that overall brightness and maybe make it a little bit duller or I can make it even shinier so it doesn't show up on such a large uh, area of our surface if we thought maybe these patches were a little bit too big didn't quite look realistic uh, then we can increase that to a very shiny amount and that will uh, reduce those areas and we can just see those little specks showing up so I'm going to go ahead and reduce that back down make it a little bit larger click OK and now we have a pretty neat looking ice block here and the bits of definition on the terrain uh, help us show a little bit better what the surface looks like uh, keep in mind that right now as we're looking at the preview render it's really really grainy uh, but it's, the final render will not look like that at all it'll actually be a really really smooth surface uh, once we turn up that quality boost
And I'm going to go ahead and change the scale of this just a little. And we're going to take a look at uh, some of the ways the lighting effects and lighting settings will change the way this absorption looks. We'll select our terrain and just kind of move around the back a little. And let's go into the Atmosphere Editor. And under the Light tab, uh, we're going to adjust the light balance setting, which is the adjustment between ambient and sunlight. If I bring this up more towards sunlight, uh, what we're seeing is a really, really bright surface in this case. Uh, sometimes it can show up a little bit darker, uh, really depending on which surfaces we have. Uh, but most of this effect uh, that we see with ice is largely an ambient effect. All the lighting uh, that we're seeing inside of our surface is ambient light. And now that I'm dragging this up from where it was before, which was around 25%, we see a very, very white surface, uh, but it looks very good uh, with our absorption and our translucency of this material. Uh, it's just a much, much brighter looking ice, and it reacts with our light a little more realistically, I think, in this case. We'll go ahead and adjust this, and we can take a look, and it's still really, really bright, uh, but we can see a lot of the absorption areas. Now another thing we need to take a look at is the reflection. Uh, now ice is going to have a little bit of reflectivity, so I'm going to bring this up to a value of around 8%. Uh, I'm not going to worry about blurred reflections at the moment because it will slow down our render time. Uh, but one thing you can do uh, to increase the realism is blur your reflections a little bit, and that way you, you won't have any really, really direct uh, reflections of the sky and clouds, uh, because that may not turn out correct, really depending on the type of ice you have. Uh, but for this, this looks pretty good. If you were to have... Uh, more terrains and just get rid of that water and just kind of have uh, an entire landscape made of this. We could have a really, really neat looking scene uh, that's largely made up of more of a glacier. If we go back to our surface and take a look at the effects, uh, we can also adjust the diffusion and ambient settings to really affect the way our translucency looks. If we increase our diffusion, and render that out, we're going to see it's very white. If we turn down our diffusion, it's going to get a little bit darker. Make sure we click OK first uh, so that we can actually see the effect. And now it's a little bit darker, uh, more close to what we were seeing before. So diffusion can really play a, a large role in how this is going to turn out. And so will our ambient setting. So let's take our ambient and go ahead and turn it down. Well, let's turn it down to 10 from 40. And we're not seeing a whole lot of change right now, uh, mainly because our lighting is closer to that sunlight. If we increase our ambient up to 60%, uh, overall, the amount of change we're seeing is not very high. And once again, that's because we're not really lighting the scene ambiently. So if we bring this down to more of an ambient light, Go back to our material. Let's bring our ambient up to 100. Now we're seeing it's a lot brighter on the inside of the object uh, because that subsurface scattering is an ambient type of light. We can bring this down to 10, and we're going to see that really darken up. I'm going to bring that back to our default of 40. Uh, another thing that will really affect this is the luminosity value. Now, in this case, we really don't need this to be glowing, uh, but if we wanted to, we could increase that value to 10, and we'll see it glow a little, kind of the same effect as the ambient, uh, but it, luminous will not be affected by sunlight or ambient values. It'll just give us a nice little glow. Uh, so there's one way you can compensate for different effects. Go ahead and drag this back to a little bit higher of a setting. Uh, maybe we'll tweak that a little lower for our ambient light. We'll go ahead and move our camera back. 
in kind of a little closer. And we're going to go back into the surface, into our translucency tab. And now we can play around with these depths a little more. I can change this to a value of 5. And we're going to see that some of the areas become a little bit darker. And we'll start to see more of the surface. So some of it will depend just on the sheer size of your ice object that you have, or your terrain. And I can see that our highlight is also a little bit high still. So I'm going to go to our highlights and just really reduce uh, that overall intensity. Uh, because the surface itself is very bright, uh, which really brings out the highlight. And I'm going to go back to our color and just bring that down a little bit more towards blue. And very small steps will affect this a uh, very large amount. Right now, I just barely brought down that color amount, but we can see uh, that it was quite a drastic change in the look of the overall surface. So we'll bring that up just a little bit more. And overall, that looks pretty good. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is so we can see more of a surface area uh, up and down on the z-axis. I'm going to select the size gizmo and just raise this up on our z. And that way we can have some more shadows showing up in certain areas. We go to the atmosphere editor and we can bring the sun down more starting to see what it will look like uh, with the sunrise and then the midday uh, where it's going to be very bright. and then also more getting towards nighttime. And this is another thing where luminosity is going to play a huge role. If we have a little loom value on our ice, it will glow uh, in a dark scene. Uh, but adjusting the ambient and some of our other settings to get the ice a little brighter uh, will not uh, have a glowing material. Uh, which can sometimes be a good thing and work out more to your advantage, uh, but it really depends on what you want it to look like uh, because there is no right or wrong way uh, for some of these settings. You just got to tweak them until they look the way you want them to. Well, I'm going to go ahead and render this out uh, just as we have it right now. And before I go ahead and make a render, I'm going to go to the translucency tab uh, within the material and just increase our quality boost up to 1.5 just to smooth that out a little bit more uh, so when we render it we can see what it actually looks like uh, because we're going to want to determine and see all little bumps with a bump map and not uh, poor quality rendering. So I render an 800 by 450 and we'll go ahead and just click render. And we can see with the render uh, that this really does look like ice. Of course, uh, there are a few things. If we take a look uh, with some of the details, uh, we can see the reflection. And there are very, very sharp reflection options uh, because we don't have that blur on. So that doesn't look quite right. Uh, also, it's extremely smooth. Uh, mainly, that's because our terrain, we smoothed it out. Uh, and there's no bump map on our material. So if this is the kind of ice you want to create, just really, really smooth, uh, then this will definitely work for that. Uh, we have a really good lighting on the inside. Uh, we might want to increase that depth a little more if we wanted to have a glow a bit, and a little bit more than it currently is, uh, really depending on the size of, of the actual uh, terrain. So we are going to make some modifications to this, uh, maybe a little bit of a bump map onto the ice. And then we're also going to be adding a snow layer uh, on top of this terrain. So that way we can have some snow over the ice. And there's a couple of different things you have to tweak uh, in order to get that to work. And we'll just go ahead and take a look at that. First thing I'm going to do is go back to our material. And in the translucency tab, just turn down uh, that quality boost a little. And that way we'll get some faster preview renders. Uh, now, if we turn it down really far, uh, you'll notice a very drastic change 
Uh, if we just bring this down to the negatives, uh, we're going to see it turns out really, really grainy and doesn't give us a good idea of what the surface looks like. So you do want to make sure that you're at least at zero or above. And now we can see a lot more of what that looks like. We'll go back into our surface. I'm going to change our depth to 10 meters. And now we see more of that glow. And it's definitely lit up more on the inside. And also in translucency, let's take a look at the absorption filter color. I'm going to edit the color, and what I want to do is just give us a little hint of blue, uh, just as we did before with the overall color of the surface. Uh, but this will give us a much more realistic look with our color on the inside, uh, where we can have it more towards white on the edges, and then more blue towards the center. We can bring that color down a little bit more so we can see it. And that definitely looks much better. And more like large amounts of ice. And we'll go back into our material. And now if we wanted to add a bump, we could right mouse click and edit our function for our bump production. We could add in a noise node, or we could use a fractal node. I'm going to decrease our gain. Uh, we don't want it to be very large, but we just want to add uh, little bumps to the overall surface. Another thing we could do to modify uh, the way this is going to look is to adjust the terrain itself, because our terrain is really, really smooth right now. Uh, so we can go to our paint and we could use a couple of these different effects in order to uh, create little bits of grid on there. Uh, if we go to pebbles and now reduce our flow to a very small amount because this is going to be a really dramatic effect and you just want to adjust the flow amount to just start to see the little bit of those little pock marks kind of showing up uh, we could also use grit and that will give us a little more of a snow type texture to it uh, we could use gravel and that will just remove some of the smoothness uh, and you can really play around with it until you get it to look the way you want. You could also use the mountain uh, preset a little bit more to add bumps to it. You could also just paint on exactly where you want those bumps to show up. So you can modify that really however you want. Uh, but now we have this really nice looking ice material and we add that little bit of a bump to it. Uh, but let's go ahead and cover this up with snow so that we just have the ice kind of showing up in so only a few areas and almost as if a recent snowfall had come down on top of this ice block. So we're going to start out by adding a layer uh, to our current material and under landscapes I'm going to select snow. Now our alpha boost is currently set to negative 50 percent which means it's blending the two materials together. Uh, but what we want to do is really overlap and just have either one material or the other. So we're going to set our alpha boost to zero. And if we take a look at the scene now uh, what we're going to end up seeing in our preview is just the snow. So all we're seeing right now is just the snow. The underlying material is being completely removed at this point uh, because we haven't set up exactly where we want this material to appear. Uh, but since it is covering our entire material, it gives us a good chance uh, to modify this layer uh, to look like snow and adjust some of our effects so it looks more realistic. So let's bring up our ambient value just a little because snow does have a tendency to glow a little more and we can lighten up some of these areas. Uh, one thing we will not be able to do is use translucency with it uh, because we can't have multiple layered translucency uh, materials. It really doesn't turn out correct. Uh, we could also go to our bump map 
edit our function. And uh, with this snow material, we have a combiner node uh, really mixed with nothing. And that way, uh, you have the amplitude amount that you can adjust and kind of blend that together uh, with a white. I'm going to give it a little more depth uh, just by dragging the amplitude over a little. And we can start to see those uh, darker areas come out. And now we can see a little more bumpiness on our surface for our snow, so it looks a little more realistic. Uh, but let's start to restrict this to certain areas of our terrain. Uh, one really good uh, tool we can use for this is the slope constraint. If we bring this value up more, or our bottom slider, uh, we're going to restrict this to only be on the flatter surface of the object, uh, which is going to be a lot more realistic. We'll increase that a little bit higher. And we also have this really sharp line uh, that we'll be able to adjust with our fuzziness. Uh, but if we take a look right now, we can see that it has really changed the look of our underlying material and our ice. It's gone very flat, and we're not seeing a lot of shadow or definition on it anymore. Uh, because the way it's being lit has changed entirely with this new layer. So we kind of have to compensate uh, for some of the lighting and manually do some of the effects in order to get it to come back and look realistic again. So I'm going to bring down our slope a little bit more so we can show a little more snowfall. And then our fuzziness, we want to adjust. And we'll do both the uh, steep and flat. We'll set them to 5% to begin with and see how that's going to look. If we need to, uh, we can reduce that value. Because uh, in this case, it actually looks like it's going to be blending too much. So I'm going to set those values down to 2%. So we still have kind of a sharp cutoff uh, between our snow and when it starts to blend into the ice. And now these effects can also be largely changed uh, by the type of lighting we're using and the lighting model. Right now we're using global illumination. If we go to our light editor, or atmosphere editor under light, we can see that. If I change this to global ambience, we're going to see a huge change. Uh, now we don't have a lot of the interference with the new material, and we have this really bright glowing material underneath, uh, which is our ice. And if I was to change this to global ambience from global illumination without the snow layer, uh, we would basically get the same effect. Go back to global illumination, it'll darken it up quite a bit. Uh, ambient occlusion is going to give us kind of an in-between value, uh, depending on the range we set. If I set a higher range, up to 50, uh, it'll start to darken up. And once this range hits a certain level, it's basically like having global illumination on. So let's go back into our surface for our terrain. And we want to edit the material underneath now. We're actually going to go back to translucency. And if we change our depth, uh, we can just take a look at some of the effects with the other settings on. If we bring this down to a value of 2, we really don't see much of a change. Bring this up to a value of, let's bring it up to 25, and click OK. Uh, we can see it's a little brighter on the edges, but overall we're not seeing that contrast, and it's not really lit the way we'd like it to be. So we'll go back into that surface and bring that down to 12 meters. And if we go into the atmosphere editor and take a look at our light balance between ambient and sunlight, this will also really affect the way this is going to look. The more towards ambient we go now, the darker the subsurface scattered uh, material is going to become. And if we bring it towards sunlight, then we're going to really start to see uh, the other part glowing. So you want to make sure you're at a good starting point, basically uh, where you want to end up uh, with your final render. And you don't want to be tweaking too much after this point. Kind of set your ambient lighting uh, to get it to an area that looks good for the entire scene, 
and then you can tweak uh, this material a little bit more to get it to match. So we've got it set around 35% right now. I'm going to click OK. And let's take a look at brightening up that surface now. If we go to the effects, we can increase our diffusion, and that will allow us to brighten up the surface underneath. But what we really want is some good shadows and some good depth to it. And right now it's very evenly lit. If we bring down our diffusion a little, uh, it will darken our surface. Uh, still not a lot of definition. So we need to take a look now at the luminous settings. Now basically because the snow layer is covering up so much of the material, uh, there's not a lot of light getting through. So if we add a luminous value uh, to our snow layer, that snow will now become a light that is going to affect our surface underneath. So we can control a lot of the lighting uh, by giving a little bit of luminosity and a luminous value uh, to both of our materials, both the ice and our snow. And it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, we can see some brighter areas uh, where they should be. And a lot of it also depends on where the sun is facing at the moment and which side we're on. Uh, if we take a look in the front, what we're seeing is a really washed out snow and we need to bring that back. So I'm going to go to the atmosphere editor and under our sky dome lighting gain, I'm going to bring that down to zero and our brightness I want to bring back to around zero, maybe a little bit brighter. Uh, we just want to get some of that definition back on our snow uh, so that's not a flat white. We could also make this a little more ambient. Click OK. Move to the side of our object uh, so that we can see a good contrast between uh, the really largely lit side of this ice and of course the side that should be in shadow. I'm going to adjust the fuzziness once again for our snow, bring it down to 1% and bring up our slope range a little so we can see more of the ice. Uh, in this case that was a little bit too much, go ahead and bring that down And it really depends on the shape of your terrain uh, and how it's going to turn out. You might need to kind of tweak these values a little bit more. Um, we could also use some of the other settings too. Uh, if we wanted it to only be on one side of the terrain, uh, we could adjust uh, the tightness values and the rotation. We'll go back into our material. And we want to adjust that underlying material once again. And we could change the depth, uh, maybe make it a little shorter. And now with this really low value, we're not seeing a lot of glow at all. And it's more of an overall appearance where it's kind of flat. So we need to make sure uh, that those settings are really going to show up and we get the shadowing in the correct area. So what we might need to do is tone down the whole surface uh, in its overall brightness and really increase the average depth. So I'm going to increase our depth to 25. Click OK. And now we see something much brighter on the edges. Open that back up. Increase that amount a little bit more. Uh, let's bring it up to 35. And now it's getting really bright around our edges. but we'll need to darken up some of these spots a little bit more. I'm also going to adjust our atmosphere. Go to the Sun tab. Just bring our pitch up a little so we have more of a daylight sky. And just kind of tweak this material. Uh, we can increase the diffusion, maybe decrease our ambient a little. 
and now we're really seeing a much brighter surface if we really decrease the ambient or sorry the diffusion uh, then it's going to become much much darker so getting a good balance uh, can sometimes involve more tweaking uh, than you'd like <laughs> uh, but you really do end up with a good looking surface in the end now we can see this is really really shining through with that high diffusion value where we have it set to 120 now so let's go to our translucency setting and turn that down and that'll start to darken up the surface go back in and sometimes you need to close out the material editor in order to render your preview correctly uh, so I'm just kind of closing it and opening it back up uh, we'll go ahead and set that to a value of 5 we can see it's getting a little darker uh, but overall it's still pretty bright we can take our under the effects our luminous down and then go back into the atmosphere editor and we can adjust some of these light settings maybe more towards ambient or sunlight and click OK and now we can see it's really really glowing underneath there uh, and it's a little too washed out uh, so I'm gonna go and go through some of our settings and kinda tweak it to get to look good and then we can go through that surface uh, and take a look at some of those settings and how it looks okay now I've made some adjustments uh, just tweaking a little here and there and now we can see it looks much much better uh, as an overall material most of the major changes I made were in the atmosphere editor uh, and if we take a look at the light settings I've got our light intensity at basically the default which is none uh, so it's zero between dark and bright our ambience down to 25 percent our ambient light I've changed from 25 percent or around that value the uniform uh, to from sky up to 50 percent I'm still using the global illumination sky dome lighting gain is down to zero and if we go into the sky fog and haze it's still basically the same values uh, we can increase that glow intensity uh, for our overall scene if we want but that's mainly just affecting the sky uh, and not our material uh, but changing some of those settings can really affect the way the material looks and if we take a look at some of the adjustments made to the material uh, let's take a look at our translucency settings I've got it set uh, to 15 meters for the average depth uh, the rest of the settings are all still exactly the same although our color is a little bit darker if you go to the effects tab I've got our diffus diffusion turned up to 115 percent and our ambient is down to 30 percent for our ice material and our subsurface scattering uh, luminous is at 10 percent so we have a little bit of a glow some color transmitted light uh, if we go to our snow layer uh, we can take a look at some of these values and what I've done is I've increased the diffusion to 80 percent and I have the ambient at 60 and then the luminous set to 8 uh, and this was to compensate mainly for the darkening of the sky which ends up balancing out our ice a little bit more uh, since that really was a drastic change and the only way to really get this dark in the way it looks right now uh, was really to decrease the overall scene's brightness and increase the brightness of our snow material if you go into the environment we can see the fuzziness is at four percent and overall uh, everything's just about the same uh, just those couple of tweaks and we end up with a really really neat looking surface uh, so we could apply this to larger terrains and more terrains uh, to create some pretty neat looking scenes and if you take a look in the content folders and little gallery um, came with the tutorial there's uh, rendered examples along with a couple of other examples and this, this material and the scene itself uh, so you can go in and take a look and kind of play around uh, with some of these settings
Uh, but it's just a really cool way we can create uh, these types of ice effects uh, with the different layers. And if we take a look uh, back in our material, just really quick, and under the effects tab, turn off luminous for our sun, or our snow layer, uh, we'll see that the entire material uh, underneath will become extremely dark, because we don't have uh, that lit area anymore. So we're using the snow above uh, to really light the translucent area underneath. And most of these settings we can use the luminous amount to really brighten up the underlying material. Bring that up to 15, and now we're going to see it get a lot brighter. So there's a lot we can do with it. Uh, we could tone it down if we wanted maybe some darker ice. Increase the overall absorption amount and the depth. And just kind of play around with it until you get uh, the settings you want.